the time has come for my people to go. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's what the people demand, and we're gonna keep fighting till we get that land. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's time to rise to get what we want, we got to organize. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Pantsula Podcast, brought to you by the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the All African People's Revolutionary Party, we were founded in 1968 uh, by the late great Osajipo Kwame Nkrumah. And today actually is the birthday of Ahmed Sekiture, who was also another co-founder of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Um, our objective in the AAPRP is Pan-Africanism. And the way we define Pan-Africanism is the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. Once again, that's the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. This definition didn't come out of the thin air. We didn't make this up out of nowhere. This, this definition came out of the fifth Pan-African Congress, which is also spearheaded by the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, Du Bois, uh, Amy Garvey, and the likes of many others. So with that being said, today our episode is called, uh, the 93rd episode is based off of the critiques are not enough. So this episode, once again, is talking about how critiques are not enough. Um, but before we start this episode, um, like we do on every each episode, we commemorate the episodes to two of our ancestors. So on this episode, we're commemorating this to, first of all, Gamal Abdul Nasser. Uh, so Nasser was a revolutionary Pan-Africanist and Pan-Arabist leader who served as the second president of Egypt for about 16 years, which started about in 1954. Uh, in 1952, a group of military officials, which included Nasir, who went by as the free officers on uh, June 18, 1953, uh, the monarchy then was abolished and the Republic of Egypt was declared, uh, with the first president actually being Naguib. Uh, so following a 1954 attempt on um, the life of Nasser by the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, Nasser uh, did a crackdown on the organization, um, put Mohammed Naguib under house arrest and assumed executive office. Um, he was formally elected president in 1950, June of 1956. Uh, after the revolution took place in 1952, uh, they actually, the government, uh, the revolutionary government, and saw the process of land reform, which began on September 11, 1952, um, which, you know, among many provisions, a law prohibited ownership of more than 200 uh, feduns of land, um, limited the rental state for land, established cooperatives for farmers, minimum wages, etc. cetera. Uh, Nasser is also known for having strong relationships with other Pan-African leaders of his time, like Kwame Nkrumah, the late great Secretary, Muammar Gaddafi, and others. Um, Nasser was also a staunch anti-Zionist. Uh, Nasser actually transitioned on September 28th of 1970. So to go on to the second ancestor, this is Ida Gibbs Hunt. Ida Alexander Gibbs Hunt was a teacher, Pan-Africanist and civil rights leader. Uh, she was born on November 6th, 1862 in Victoria, British Columbia. Um, Gibbs taught at M Street High School in Washington, DC which is a prestigious African-American college preparatory school and at, also at Florida A&M College in Tallahassee. She retired from teaching in 1904 and involved herself in activism in which uh, she joined a handful of black women in founding the first uh, Young Women's Christian Association, which is acronym is w YWCA in Washington, DC for African-Americans. Uh, she participated in the uh, Niagara Movement uh, the Femmes de, de France, the Bethel Literary Society, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, which is also known as the NAACP, the Washington Welfare Association, the Women's International League for Peace uh, and Freedom, and the Red Cross. Uh, Ida Hunt was also the Assistant Secretary for the Second Pan-African Congress uh, that took place in Paris in 1919. She delivered a paper entitled, quote, The Colored Races and the League of Nations, end quote, and the third Pan-African Congress in London, which took place in 1923 and co-chaired the conference executive committee with W.E.B. Du Bois. 
Um, Ida Gibbs Hunt uh, transitioned to Washington, Washington D.C. on December 19th, 1957. So once again, we like to state, you know, thanks to these ancestors because without them, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't be who we are. We wouldn't be able to do the work uh, that we'd be able to do if it wasn't for them or struggle on a basis that we do now. Um, so definitely want to say thanks to those two ancestors there. But back to the main topic at hand, once again, um, talking about how critiques are not merely enough. So I guess just understanding that critiquing a backward society or saying that there needs to be improvement on a set society, I think a lot of times we need to ask ourselves is, what are we actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis to make a better society, right? Like, what work are we engaging in on a day-to-day -day basis to make this better society? Uh, because I know a lot of the times, whether it's social media, whether it's topics being discussed um, that we may see on TV, uh, that we may hear about, whatever the case is, we hear about a lot of the critiques of these systems. Um, you know, some you know a lot of times through media is not talking about systems; it's talking about the, the causes and effects of systems. But either way, it's still a critique in itself of society. Um, and I think sometimes we get caught up in just the conversation. Oh, we need to bring attention to this. We need to bring awareness, but all right, so once awareness has been spread enough, what do we do from here? We need to ask ourselves like, all right, so okay, we all know about this is wrong or this is this is bad. What are we doing to implement something new? Are we just solely waiting and relying on the same people that we know are backward, sadistic, um, and are not looking for our interests? Or are we actually engaging in a process where we're day by day, you know, chipping away at the system and looking to seek power for the masses for us because we're the ones that, that are laboring and toiling, um, you know, obviously in the capitalist system, it's not to our benefit, to the benefit of the bourgeois ruling class. So I think that's something that we always need to keep in mind because once again, I just think we get caught up in dialogue so much. It's just that we don't even think in, you know, how do we apply this? Like, we just have a thing that comes to, to conversation a lot of times. It's just, oh yeah, you know, this is bad. You know, capitalism sucks. You know, you know these elected officials aren't doing anything for us. And that's great. That's good in understanding. I think it's good to call out those contradictions. And I think this topic or this episode isn't just saying, oh, okay, we shouldn't critique. You know, obviously we have to start from somewhere. And I think it's good to call out the contradictions because people need to see them and understand what the contradictions are. But once they see and understand that, there's a second step that goes with that, right? The, the second step would be on acting on that. So yeah, in my opinion, I <laughs> I strongly convicted is that, you know, in studying revolutions and how societies have changed in various places is that those people had to actually practice that, you know, they felt the material implications of colonialism, neo-colonialism, imperialism, um, patriarchy, et cetera. And for them to change it, they had to know that, oh, we have to, one, we can't do it on our own. So yeah, we have to organize, um, but we also have to, you know, with that organization, we have to mobilize too as well um, with that, you know, understand these are problems and we have to mobilize against it, essentially. Um, just as speaking into the answers I commemorated earlier, Nasir, Nasir and the free officers, <laughs> you know, they didn't just sit back and say, you know, the monarchy is bad, right? Oh, the monarchy, they just continuously tell everyone just the monarchy is bad. You know, granted that that probably was something that they did in literature and um, was creating uh, a movement, you know, in a way or understanding from the masses, but they had to enact on that and overthrow the, um, the monarchy and able to establish a revolutionary government. All right, because if that's what we want, if that's inherently what we want. We want change. We want change in principles. We want change in ethics and, and morals of a said country. You know, me talking about like United Snakes or even Africa or whatever, you know, backward situations or capitalist society where we want to be the uh, owners, you know, of the means of production or how things are produced, then yeah, that, that's going to require not just talking. You don't create revolution by just merely just talking. And to be fair, on the opposite side, you don't create revolution by just by just practicing, right? Like you need to understand and have a clear understanding of your what you're going after, right? You have to have a clear ideological stance. So this is a great quote by Kwame Nkrumah where he states that theory without practice is empty and practice without theory is blind. Very, you know, I, this is me summing it up. I don't think I'm, I may, I may butcher it a little bit, but this is, that's just what he said. It's like theory without practice is empty, and practice without theory is blind, right? That 
if you if you are practicing without uh, an understanding or a theory to guide that practice, then you know you're going to miss the mark a lot of times. You're going to make unnecessary errors, right? So you're going to be doing things blindly. You you won't be able to. You're not really seeing the contradictions. You're just you know doing things. And you kind of sometimes when you just do that, you're kind of like a hamster in the wheel. You're just doing the same thing over and over and over again, not even understanding why you're doing it. So people, when you're trying to organize, they are doing mobilization work, but then over time it's like, okay, we've been doing this for X amount of months, X amount of years, and we don't see the purpose of this because we don't even understand. They don't have a political understanding on why they're doing what they're doing. They don't have an understand the political systems of play uh, that work to oppress our people. So when people that they encounter are struggling with them or asking them about certain things, they can't answer it. And then, you know, people in the community don't really take you as serious because they're like, oh, you don't even know what the problems are in our society. Um, how do I know more about it than you? And you're supposed to be some type of like revolutionary activist or whatever, right? <laughs> or organizer. So, you know, that's, that's, that goes to say one thing. But then on the other end is that if you're just talking all day and doing everything, you know, people in your community or people who are in revolutionary spaces, just they're not going to take you serious because you're not doing anything. You're just talking. You're just sitting there telling us what's wrong with society. And okay, we know this too. You know, we have some inkling about some of this. We may not know everything, you know, maybe because you you read a little bit more or you're more um, knowledgeable, but you actually have to practice these things to get people to see what you're doing in, uh, in your community or in different spaces to then be like, oh, okay, like, we see that you guys aren't just talking. You guys actually want the change you guys are talking about, um, essentially. It's like me <laughs> talking about, you know, watching basketball and being like, oh, I could put a 50 points easily if I was in the NBA. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. And I've been sitting on my couch and I never even worked to try to get in the NBA or whatever the case is, right? Or I'm not really doing so. Like, people are not going to take me serious if I just tell, if I go around parading in bars and, um, you know, even though I don't really go to bars or anything, but you know, if I go around in different places and start telling everyone like, oh yeah, look, uh, you know, um, I could put up 50 points on LeBron James, it's easy, it's gonna be nothing, da, 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 da. and I'm just telling people that, and I'm not working towards that, or that's not really a goal. People are just gonna look at me and laugh, because they're gonna, they're gonna know when I, you know, if someone asks me, are you putting in the work? I could just say, oh, no, nah, that doesn't matter. You know, I, I know I just could do it because I watch them on TV all the time, and da, 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 da. I'm critiquing, uh, LeBron all the time, um, knowing that I can't do half the stuff he does. I'm just sitting there critiquing him, right? So I'm just saying that to say is like, you know, you have to match up what you say with action. You have to prove it out every time. Um, or it's just, what do, why are you saying this? <laughs> why are you just, you know what I mean? Like, why, why are you, okay, you're bringing attention to it. So what's, what's, I think it's important that we all understand that we need to do our part, that, you know, we just, you just can't actively, you know, if you can't actively join an organization, um, I would recommend, you know, contribute, uh, you know, any type of monetary means you can, like try to contribute money if possible, if you have the means to do so. Um, or if you feel like you can contribute to the organization as dedicated like day to day or week to week, maybe once a month or once every two months, you know, try to tap in with your local org and then ask them, hey, like, is there any way I could help contribute? I may not have the means right now, money, but maybe I could show up to a clothing drive. You guys are doing a food drive or whatever program, grocery program that you guys are doing. Like, you know, I'm willing to be of assistance, um, but do something like engage in something. If you don't have, for whatever personal reasons, you, you say that you can't join an organization and be a, do the committed work day to day. Um, so I think that's another thing too. I think people need to be honest of where they're at in their lives before joining an organization. Like if you know, you know, you have a lot of personal stuff going on and you can't contribute all that because revolutionary work is a lot. <laughs> I've been in APRP for over two years and this year will be the third year, um, like sometime in the summer. And it's a lot of effort and work and you need to make sure you're committed to complete your assignments and do things in a, on a timely manner. Um, because people are counting on you to get the stuff done. You know, and we, we can't be liberal about the work we do. We have to be, you know, consistent revolutionaries. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I just, uh, that, that pretty much wraps up <laughs> this episode. I know this was a quick one. Uh, this is a solo episode. Just wanted to kind of just hammer that down and let everyone know, hey, look, you know, we have to do our part. We can't just be talking 
you know, it was cool to to criticize. And I think, you know, it's good to call out the contradictions and, you know, struggle with people. But at the same time, what are you doing to affect the change that you want to see? What what work are you doing to do that? So that's something that we need to all ask ourselves and try to, you know, actually practice. It's like, all right, let me start being more involved. Let me start doing stuff. Let me do something. You know, and if you feel like, like we say in every episode, if you feel like any of the organizations you see out there is not fit for what you think is the world you want to see, then, hey, try to create your own organization. Um, and there's plenty of organizations that I know that are willing to help, just like the APRP. So feel free to reach out if that is the case. And yeah, with that said, we appreciate you guys joining another episode of the Pantula Podcast. Uh, we definitely implore you guys to check out our other podcasts, which are in the link in the description, um, the Forward Ever Podcast, and many others um, as well. Uh, and then also support our comrades in Burkina Faso uh, with the library that we have out there that we're trying to keep intact, keep supporting for our political education process out there. So definitely support that. And that, the link for that will also be in the bio. And with that said, uh, we appreciate you again and look forward to having you on the next episode of Forever.